Hi and welcome to this experiment of today which hopefully we will please not only synthesizers fans but also science fiction uh, enthusiasts because we will deal not only with synthesizers but also with antimatter. Now antimatter is famous because it's the energy that drives the Captain Kirk Enterprise. And why is so? Well, antimatter is just a regular matter but holds a different charge, electrical charge. So for example, positrons are just like regular electrons but their charge is opposite, which means that it is a positive particle instead of a negative one. And antiprotons are just all regular protons, but they hold a negative charge. Now, what's the special thing about this is that when antimatter and matter collide, they annihilate, transforming their whole mass into energy by following the classical uh, Einstein formula E equals mc squared. And that's the only uh, nuclear reaction that transforms the whole mass of a particle into energy. So it's thousands of times more efficient and powerful than fusion reactors and nuclear reactors. It's a super perfect way of transforming matter into energy. Fortunately for us, antimatter is not common in the universe. However, it is produced sometimes by radioactive decay of certain elements, for example, potassium-40 that we have in our body, sometimes the case with a positron. Now, for the experiment of today, we will use an artificial isotope called sodium-22. Sodium-22 is made inside nuclear reactors and sometimes, it, often, it decays with positron emission, which means that are electrons with a positive charge. So when these electrons, these beta rays, positive beta rays, collide with normal electrons, they annihilate and transform totally into two gamma rays at a specific energy value. Now, the setup of today is composed by a uh, 3500 synthesizer, uh, radiation meter, professional radiation meter, which is used in uh, nuclear power plants or laboratories or uh, customs or uh, hospitals. This scintillator, which is a special form of uh, radiation detector, which not only can count particles but can calculate the energy of every particle, every gamma ray that hits the counter and therefore it's used with spectroscope to give us a spectrum of the energies and therefore we can infer the kind of isotope we are analyzing. I will deal with this a little better right now. Now I take this uh, sample, uh, this is a uh, sealed source of an artificial element. They are often used for uh, calibration of instruments or uh, lessons in university, so it's perfectly safe. We put this under the scintillator and we have here a gamma spectroscope which I have uh, created in Max MSP. Now this is a special kind of spectroscope you will see because it will give us some um, sound out of it which we will use to control the synthesizer. So uh, the spectroscope usually integrates, these are the particles that are heating the spectroscope. The source actually is emitting something like uh, 35,000 particles per second and now we integrate the time and we will see, and we see a spectrum. This spectrum represents the distribution of the energies in time. Every kind of decay have a different energy. 
every kind of isotope has a different spectrum. So by looking at the spectrum, we can understand what element, what isotope is emitting radiation. And <coughs> sodium-22, I say, mostly gives off uh, positrons, so they are antimatter. But this one doesn't count positrons. This one, this uh, meter, calculates the energies of gamma rays. Now, when positrons exit the source or immediately inside the source encounter the electrons, they annihilate and they convert their mass into energy. And this energy has a special um, signature, has a special frequency, of course, and it's this one. Here we have uh, 512 kilo electron volts, which means that this is the signature of the positron annihilation exactly. And what this software does, it, uh, not only it makes a spectrum, but I can put a cursor here exactly in the point in the middle of the peak and it starts uh, spitting off the clicks whenever a positron annihilate in and it is registered by the spectroscope. So these clicks are going here inside the synthesizer and if we turn up the volume we are hearing the antimatter that drives the synthesizer the synthesizer so it's we are using actually positrons to trigger the synthesizer the sounds you are hearing are not oscillators these are the oscillators and they are disconnected but we are using the click of the Geiger of the spectroscope and feeding that click inside three different resonators. One of the fantastic thing of the 2500 is that the filters are not only multi-mode filters with low pass, high pass, band pass and notch, but also they resonate with a very high gain of Q. There is something like 54 dB of uh, Q, so it resonates naturally like a a model resonator and of course we are creating some random nodes with this sample and old and the result it's quite bongo It's quite acoustic in, in its quality. Yeah, the counter now is just telling me that radiation levels at this bay, at this side of the of my desk is just a little bit over the normal. It's just 10 microsieverts. Oh, 15 micro, uh, 0 0.15 microsieverts, a little bit above the normal, but it's just a very low value. Oh, usually it's 0 0.10, 0 0.15, but this is just to, to, to say that, of course, we are reading some radiation from that, but it's quite low. If you go on an airplane, you will get 3 or 4 microsieverts during one hour of flight. So this is 0 0.20 every hour. It's a very low value of course because we are at a distance from the source. So it is a uh, nuclear reaction of antimatter is controlling a synthesizer. And this is kind of science fiction music, you know. It's quite incredible to use uh, sophisticated uh, apparatus for nuclear physics analysis to create sounds 
And it's quite beautiful. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy this video.